Yay, bargain bag! That's it. That's my cold open. I don't know what to tell you. I, I got nothing. Sorry. And welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, it is yay bargain bag time again. Bargain bag is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two mystery CD grab bags from the late Skips Records and CD World. And uh, in between opening the two bargain bags, I will review a CD for you that I found or that you might be likely to find in the bargain c CD section of a music retailer near you. But before I get to any of that stuff, I will quickly go over the CDs that I found in last month's pair of mystery grab bags, uh, talking about the what wonders I might have found, or didn't find, more to the point in this case. Uh, yeah, last month was such a, a boon, I actually kept 6 out of the 14 CDs, so almost 50%. So this month couldn't help but be a bit of, bit of a disappointment. Uh, and by the way, before I get to, to any of them, uh, if you guys want any of the CDs that I am casting off from this bunch, just leave me a message in the comment section below or in a direct message on Twitter. I will be happy to mail them to you. No posters necessary if you live in the United States. If you live outside the United States, uh, we might have to make arrangements. But uh, yeah, I usually keep these CDs for about two weeks after the upload date of this video. So check the upload date. If it's within two weeks, I still have the CDs. Lucky for you, huh? Anyway, let's get on with the uh, overview of last month's bargain bag. Uh, this one, uh, yet another Christmas CD that came in last month's bags that I uh, have not listened to yet. Usually right after Thanksgiving up until December 25th is when I listen to holiday music. So I will hang on to this one and give it a listen. I've got one CD from last month's bargain bag and possibly one from the month previous. I can't remember. I've I've lost track. Uh, that I'm doing the same thing with hanging on to until Christmas of 2020 rolls around, or the Christmas season that is. So yeah, I'm hanging on to this one. We'll listen to it then. Uh, and the next three CDs are actually ones that I already have, so uh, I didn't need to listen to them. Uh, this one, John Cicada. He was a uh, Latin pop singer. Uh, kind of like Ricky Martin, Mark Anthony, that kind of thing, uh, from the late 80s, early 90s, early 90s. Uh, it was a pretty good album, and uh, Skip actually had this funny story. He had c probably close to a dozen copies of this lining the bargain CD wall as the store was closing, and so two of my friends actually got copies of this CD uh, in little care packages, bunches of CDs that I got uh, during going out of business sale for them, so those two of my friends already know this CD, and I already have it, so... Uh, Anybody else wants it? Hey, you can find it pretty much freaking everywhere. But hey, if you want it for me. And then uh, this one I thought I didn't have and I was, was overjoyed to find. But in, uh, after I filmed the video, I realized this is the one Peter White CD that I already have. So, oh well. I've uh, been looking for his other ones. So uh, one of these days I'll find him. But yeah, Peter White is a jazz guitarist. Uh, very talented, good stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you like jazz guitar, hit me up. And the third one that I already had uh, will actually be the CD that I review in between the two bag openings. So stay tuned for that one. So yes, you're only going to see me talk about 13 CDs here in the beginning. Uh, this next one is uh, I had these guys' greatest hits CD a while back and eventually got rid of it. They're okay. They're uh, Blessed Union of Souls is the name of the group. They're kind of a uh, folk pop sort of uh, act with a little bit of R&B mixed into them. They're actually pretty good. Uh, I just kind of, you know, got tired of the music and uh, was in one of my CD purges and got rid of it. Uh, but this is their debut album, Home. Uh, and then this next one, uh, I think Garrett expressed interest in getting this one, uh, the Batman Forever. Yeah, Batman Forever soundtrack. Mm, it's okay stuff. You know, a lot of uh, pop and rock chart hits, uh, or at least by pop and rock chart hit, hit artists. Uh, yeah, U2, PJ Harvey, Seal, Brandy, Massive Attack, The Offspring. Yeah, meh. Just I, just, I was never into the Batman movies, actually, and uh, I only really keep song-based soundtracks if there's an artist or two or three on there that I really, really enjoy. Uh, I've got a few examples of those, but yeah. This one, just not enough to really thrill me or hold me or kiss me or kill me. But anyway, you have to know the title of the U2 song in that soundtrack to uh, get that joke, but anyway. Next one, Jimmy Buffett. You know, Jimmy Buffett is, well, Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. Just kind of that, that tropical pop stuff that I just could never get into. A little bit kitschy for my tastes, what can I say? 
trying not to be a music snob, honestly. Uh, this next one, Nancy Griffith, it actually came with no liner notes at all, no front insert, no back insert. Uh, it's okay stuff, kind of a uh, folk bordering on country kind of stuff. It's okay, you know. Um, Avid or A-V-I-D, I'm not sure how it's uh, spelled, because, you know, the each of the letters is in its own circle, so I don't know if it's an acronym or if it's the word Avid. But, uh, yeah, post-grunge is basically what this is. You know, just kind of, eh. And that same goes for this next group, the Hatters, uh, also post-grunge. And, yeah, you know, just okay, just didn't tickle my fancy. Then we have, this one was odd. This was the one that you might recall when I opened last month. It was in the very odd CD case here, you can see. Um, and it, it looks, I mean, you look at the front cover, it's really futuristic and stuff. And basically what it is, is jazz piano. You know, pretty old school. It's it's very improv, you know, free form improv kind of stuff, which as you guys have, I've told you before, is not my thing. I like the more structured songs. So yeah, that not my kind of stuff. And actually there were two such CDs, you know, uh, um, free form improv jazz. Uh, that's uh, this other one, Don Clement or Clement. Not sure how you pronounce her last name. Uh, that her album Hush, you know, piano based improv jazz. Yeah. And then this, these next two, I think I'm going to keep actually. Uh, Sin Bandera is a uh, Latin pop group. Uh, so this was kind of good stuff. Uh, some some catchy songs in here. Uh, I had never heard these guys before. I think they've been around for a while. Uh, this one is uh, 2001. Yeah, I might check out some of their other stuff if I ever happen upon it. Yeah. And then this one is actually a CD that I'd had before and got rid of prematurely, uh, my last copy of it. Um, Lubega, a little bit of Mambo. Uh, you pretty much know this album. I mean, it, it, it was pretty well known, pretty successful. Latin style music, obviously. But uh, yeah, pretty good. So that is the roundup of previous uh, month's CD. So let's go ahead and dip into the first of the two mystery CD grab bags. I am really going to miss this feature when it's gone. Really going to miss it. So if anybody goes CD shopping, gets into a whole bunch of CDs, and feels like putting together mystery CD grab bags and sending them to me just for when I run out of skips, hey, I won't stop you. Okay, let's open this bag. And we'll give you all a peeky peeksy before I dip in here, so you guys get to see what's in here before I do. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little frog in the throat. So let's see what's here. Uh, a CD single, Laurel McDonald, a uh, song called Wingspan, uh, from her full-length album Chroma. Yeah. Not familiar with it, so it'll be interesting to hear. Don't get very many CD singles in these grab bags. And then we have the James Project Band, Faith is What You Do. And this is a praise and worship CD. I can tell by the song titles. Kind of gives it away. Lift Jesus higher. God will take care of you. It's not a mystery what this stuff is. So, uh, yeah. I will probably be passing on that. Anybody out there who's a heavy-duty Christian, this one's up for grabs probably right away. And then, oh! On the Rocks. This is an a cappella group uh, from the University of Oregon, a university local here in, Eugene, in uh, the Eugene area. And this is pretty good stuff. They're, uh, they've been around for quite a while. I actually have this CD, so very, very good college a cappella. If you like college a cappella, they did some good stuff. And I can, I could tell you a story. I think that, in fact, I think I might have already told you about a group called Guster. And On the Rocks is how I found out about them. They cover, actually, it's on this CD. They cover one or two songs by Guster. And they do a darn good job of it, too. So, yeah, if you like college a cappella, uh, that's one. Then we have, oh, the insert is on, uh, is inside out, but uh, here we go. Let's have some boy band stuff. 98 Degrees. There we go. Uh, 98 Degrees and Rising is the uh, name of the album. I think this was their debut. I'm not sure. Yeah, honestly, I I've love Backstreet Boys. I love NSYNC. These guys were a total snooze fest for me. Yeah, and I just did not care for them at all. So, uh, I'll probably listen to it just to see if it, I change my mind on it. But, uh, yeah. ooh, the Forrest Gump soundtrack. 
I maybe end up be, I end up keeping this. I've kind of been when I see it in the CD racks, I always kind of stop and look. Hmm, should I pick it up? Hmm, there's a reason I didn't, obviously, because I got it here for free. So cool. That's a nice little uh, extra. And then a classical CD, the instruments of classical music, the flute. So yeah, I'm always up for a little bit of classical. So definitely check this one out. Yeah. And just like that. That's it for that bag. Uh, you'll notice there were only six titles in it because the Forrest Gump disc was a double thick thing. So a double thick thing. Well, there you go. So that's it for that bag. Okay, now as for the CD I'll be talking about today, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's one that was in one of the two grab bags that I opened last month. And it's one that I already own and have owned for quite a long time. Uh, it was put out in 1999 and I bought it used at Skip's uh, so that was probably a, a, after it had been out for a couple of years, so let's say I bought it in 2001, and uh, I've been enjoying it for, well, almost 20 years now. Uh, it's just a great little rock album. It is uh, the major label debut album by a rock band called Stroke Nine. It's called Nasty Little Thoughts. And funny story, this, I probably wouldn't even put this in my top 100 favorite albums of all time, but for some reason I remember the day I bought this album. I don't know what it is uh, about it, but it's, it just, you know, it just leaves that impression on me for some reason. Uh, I bought it, as I said, at Skips, and uh, the only thing that I had that played music at that point, uh, the only thing portable that I had, was a little CD Walkman, you know, the handheld CD players with the headphones, and of course I had that with me that day. Bought this CD, and knowing me, I bought a couple others probably at the same time, and uh, walked out of the store and got on the bus, put this CD in my CD Walkman, put it on shuffle mode, and I just rem remember being greeted with one great catchy rock song after another. It just uh, was just a great, great album. A uh, great album to put on shuffle mode, it turned out. Uh, but yes, fun uh, lyrics. It's it's rock. I, I wouldn't quite call it post-grunge. It's, it's a little more polished, more uh, slickly produced than post-grunge. But uh, just, uh, yeah, just great. Um, great lyrics in these songs. Uh, I mean, the hooks are great, but the lyrics are great also. These guys had a great sense of wordplay, uh, particularly uh, words that sound the same but are different. Like uh, in one of the songs, their single, uh, Little Black Backpack, which, I mean, there's the, the, the alliteration of that is one of the reasons why I like it so much. I, I, I love bands that love to play with the English language like this. Uh, in the chorus, there's a line, Don't want to tango with you, I'd rather tangle with him. That's, that's just great, you know. A great play on words there, and in another, another song called "Washin' and Wonderin," uh, there's the it opens up with a lyric, "Grin and bear it, it's bear and grim." So, you you can kind of tell why I love these guys. They're just uh, some some great lyrical wordplay in these songs, and as I said, the songs are really really catchy, and everything from high energy rock songs. Uh, to mid-tempo songs with just really, really catchy hooks in them, like uh, Letters is the opening track. It's just, that's one of those really catchy ones. And uh, A Little Black Backpack is one of the uh, uh, more upbeat, more uh, rocking kind of songs. And they even got, they've even got some great ballads on here. The uh, closing track on here, Tear Me In Two, that's a power ballad. It's just, it's kind of heartbreakingly beautiful, I guess, in a manner of speaking, because the, the guitars are kind of heavy. And that's one hallmark of these guys' songs, is the guitars are usually pretty heavy, pretty dense, wh which is one reason why I... They kind of border on post-grunge. It's just, you know, they've got those heavy, fuzzy guitars, kind of. So, but yeah, if you love that, you know, pretty thickly guitar-based rock, but with a little bit more of a production sheen on it, check out Stroke 9. Um, I'm thinking I might send this CD to a friend of mine. I'm not sure if he's going to be into this kind of stuff or not, so I kind of hesitate. So if there's anybody that's just absolutely clamoring for this CD, let me know uh, ASAP and I'll send it to you before I send it to him. Uh, if I don't find anybody else to send it to, that is. But yeah, check these guys out. They've put out uh, several albums over the years. I think they just... Uh, this year, or at the end of last year, they just put out their most recent album, and that's been after like a 10-year gap. And uh, I, unfortunately, I've only, I only own this album and the one after it, uh, so yeah, I have yet to hear that album. So I'm, uh, yeah, listening to this one again is making me really want to uh, revisit these guys and see what they've been doing since then. So uh, yeah, Stroke Nine, Nasty Little Thoughts, very, very good album. And now on to the second of two mystery CD grab bags for the month of March. Obtained the 
bilateral cutting implement. Scientific terminology. Okay. Let's check out a little Pixies for you guys here and a little uh, Tixies out of the bagsies for me. Let's see what this is. David Bowers and Watermelon Sugar. Interestingly that I would get this uh, just a few months after uh, our boy Harry Styles put out a song called Watermelon Sugar. I have to wonder if this was uh, in any way related. I have no idea. Yeah, I see electric guitars, but I also t see tambourines and stuff. So I wonder if this is kind of some kind of a folk rock band. Uh, regardless, it will be interesting to listen to, as these CDs always are. Then we have uh, oh, a band called Sleeper. And the last one in this bag, Sleeper, the It Girl, apparently. And the album is called Vegas, I think. It feels awfully light. Is there... Oh, there is a CD in there. It, it felt too light to have a CD in it, but there is a CD in there. And, oh, it's a uh, four-track EP. Yeah, check that out. Then we have Keith Martin, It's Long Overdue. That's the name of the album. I'm uh, not sure what this is. It's, it's on Columbia Records. Uh, probably r and I hate to pigeonhole African-American artists or African-esque artists as R&B, but I just, for some reason I just get that vibe. And we have Guy in Glasses. Uh... Radney Foster, not Randy Foster, but Radney Foster. Del Rio, Texas, 1959 is the name of the album. Yeah, probably country. I'm interested to check that out. And then we have Paul Prince, Ocean Bells, Hawaiian Slack Key, and Zimbabwean Guitar. So, uh, world music to an extent. So, uh, definitely check that out. Don't know what to say about it, because I haven't listened to it yet. Then we have oh, a radio station compilation, Smooth Jazz, V98.7. I don't know where this radio station originates. Oh, Chicago, Illinois. So, uh, yeah, Boney James, Paul Taylor, Dave Coz, Kim Waters. So, yeah, Nelson Rangel. A few uh, decently high-profile names on it. And then we have Donna Lewis, now in a minute. I have seen this CD countless times, probably at Skip's In the Bargain section, uh, and, and now I have a copy of it so I can actually listen to it myself. So yeah, I have no idea who she is, what kind of music she does, so I will finally find out. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, Bargain Bag is over way too quickly. And that is it for Bargain Bag for March of 2020. An interesting assortment yet again of CDs, and uh, yeah, Next month, I will tell you what I thought of these. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.